Welcome back to another Pragmatic Works YouTube video. My name is Nate Hallowell. I'm a senior trainer at Pragmatic Works, and today is all about polymorphic data types. Let's talk about polymorphic data types and what they are. Uh, it's a very scary sounding word. I, I avoided them for the longest time, and that's actually why I'm making this video, because they are nothing to be afraid of. Uh, they're very easy to work with in Power Apps. You just have to know kind of what you're doing. You have to know what they are and, and how to work with them. So. Let's first talk about lookup columns. Uh, a lookup column, as you may or may not know, it stores an object from a different table. For example, I might have a column in my data that uh, looks up to the account table. So if I have a contact, right, they are part of an account. So there is a field in the contact table that looks up to the account table. That's a simple lookup column. It stores an object from the account table in the contact table. Now, a polymorphic data type is similar to a lookup column in that it stores an object in the column, but it could store an object from numerous tables. A good example of this, and one that's actually out of the box with every Dataverse table, is when you go to add a new column in your Dataverse table and you go to the data type and you hover over the lookup section, you'll see that there are two. There's a standard lookup and there's this customer lookup type. The customer type is a polymorphic data type, and that could either look up to the contact table or the account table. So in this example that we'll be doing today, it's a very simple example here. We have a, a ledger in Dataverse. We have uh, you know, the amount owed, and we have you know, the person that we owe the money to, and that could be a person or a company. So we're using the customer data type, that polymorphic data type, to store that information. Now let's go take a look at the example we'll be working with here today. I've got a very simple Canvas app. I've got a gallery of all my ledger items and then a form to add a ledger item. So here's our very simple form, just the amount owed, whether it's accounts payable or accounts receivable, and you know who we owe this money to or who owes us this money. So let's say for this first one, I'll just do $50. I want to say that I owe $50, so this is payable, and who do I owe this money to? Now, this is where we have our polymorphic data type in our form. We could either be looking up to accounts or to contacts. So I'm using this simple toggle here to flip between accounts and contacts, and let's say I owe uh, Brian Knight 50 bucks. I'm gonna go ahead and submit that, and then in my gallery, I've got, okay, Brian Knight, $50, payable. Now what happens if I owe $100? You know what, let's say I'm owed $100 this time. I wanna come out on top. So I am owed $100 and we'll keep it to the accounts this time and we'll say ABC Corp owes me 100 bucks. So you see in the gallery, right here it's displaying the person and here it's displaying the account. So let's dive right in and figure out how to do this inside of Canvas Apps. So I'm gonna just create a new screen here, a gallery, and a form. So I'm gonna put in a simple gallery. We'll make this just title and subtitle since I don't have any images. And the data source will be our ledgers. There we go, we've got item 1006 and item 1007. Those are the ones that I just added uh, for Brian Knight and for ABC Corp. So let's go ahead now and let's add a form to enter some data. And this is gonna to go to our ledgers table. Now by default, it's bringing in our primary name column and the created on date. So I'm just gonna make a couple simple UI changes here. I wanna go one column and I'm gonna bring in my extra fields. So I wanna say, what's the amount that's owed? Who is the customer? And we've got the ledger type. So I'm gonna add those three fields and I'll go ahead and remove a couple fields here. You know, We don't need the ledger number, that's just auto number and we don't need the created on. Now I'm gonna move ledger type. And you'll see the first thing to notice with a polymorphic data type is when you add that field to your form, there's nothing in the data card. So we need to actually go in and add some items to our data card. So to make this work, you first have to add the data sources that could potentially be uh, stored in that polymorphic lookup. So in my data sources, in my app, I've got the ledgers, which is obviously this gallery in the form, but I also need to bring in the accounts and the contacts. Because this customer polymorphic data type looks up to accounts or contacts, I've had to bring accounts and contacts into my app. So in this empty data card, 
let's go ahead and add some information here. The first thing is it doesn't even bring in uh, the name of the field. So if we look up above, whenever we add a, a data card to our form, it comes with a data card key that's showing us the, the name of the field. So this is ledger type, uh, but in the polymorphic card, right, it didn't bring anything in. We need to add those manually. So I'm just gonna make it easy on myself. I'm gonna do a control C on this data card key. And first I'm gonna unlock my customer data card and I'm gonna add that in. It's already showing me parent.display name. Now for this, you know, I maybe made a mistake on the name of my column. Uh, maybe it shouldn't be customer. So I'm gonna make this do to or do from. And now I just need a way for my users to select either those accounts or those contacts. So I'm gonna go ahead and add, you know, just like you would see in a regular lookup column, it would add a combo box for me. So I'm gonna just insert a combo box. And for this one, I'm gonna make this look up to the accounts table. So we'll make sure that works. There we go. We've got Pragmatic Works, ABC Corp, and Dunder Mifflin. But because this is polymorphic and it could look up to either accounts or contacts, let's also, I'm just gonna copy and paste this. And I'm gonna put in another combo box for my contacts. And there we go. There's all my contacts and there's all my accounts. Now, a couple of changes here, instead of find items and blank for the no selection text, I'm gonna to go to the advanced, and instead of find items here, I'm gonna put in accounts as my kind of hint text here. So accounts, and for this contact combo box, I'm gonna do the same thing, but I'm gonna make this contacts there we go now we need a way for the users to flip back and forth between these combo boxes right what what should really happen if we look back at my other form on the first screen is we just have you know it looks like just one input here instead of having both accounts and contacts and the visibility of these combo boxes is controlled by this toggle so if i am owed money from an account i'll leave the accounts toggle switch to accounts if i'm owed that money by a person or a contact i'll flip that and i'll have access to all my contacts so just a simple visibility trick here with the toggle um, so in this data card I'm gonna go and insert a toggle. And for this, I'm gonna call this, I'm gonna rename it just so it makes my coding easier a little bit later. I shouldn't say coding, my formulas a little bit easier later. I'm gonna call this TGL customer type. Now for the visibility of this account combo box and this contact combo box, I'm gonna go in and let's say if it's off, I want that to be my accounts. If it's on, I want that to be my contacts. So first, just so I don't confuse myself, I'm gonna go in and change the off and on text or the false and true text for this toggle. So if it's turned off, I want that to be accounts. And if it's turned on, I want that to be contacts. So I'll make this a little larger so that I can see the full text there. So accounts, contacts. Easy enough. All right, now for the visibility of this accounts combo box, I'm going to go in and I'm going to go to the properties and I'm going to go to the visible property. And instead of just being visible all the time, I'm going to point to my TGL customer type toggle and value. Now, if that is true, then I want the, if this value is true, I want the contacts to be visible. If it's false, I want the accounts to be visible. So this visibility, I actually need the inverse of what I just said. So instead of 
toggle customer type dot value, if I want the inverse of something in Power Apps, I just need to do an exclamation mark before that statement. So I want the opposite of this value here. There we go. So accounts, contacts. The visibility for accounts combo box is working great. So I'm just going to copy this code right here and apply it to the visible property of my contacts combo box without the exclamation mark. So there we go. As I flip this, you'll see the different combo boxes become visible and hidden. Perfect. Now I'm just going to move this contacts right over top of the accounts combo box. Accounts, contacts, beautiful. All right. Now, the other thing we need to kind of pre-configure with this data card is for these standard fields, these standard data cards, there is an update property. So this property says what data to send back to the table. So the update property by default for this ledger type is just this data card value eight dot selected dot value. So if I go down to the customer card and I go to the update property, it is totally blank, right? This is a polymorphic data type, so we have to do this manually. So I'm gonna go back to, again, using this toggle here to determine which data I should send back to my database. Uh, first, let's go ahead and rename these combo boxes just so that our formulas are a bit easier to write. So I'm gonna make this combo box called CMB contacts, and I'll make combo box two which is looking up to my accounts table. This is going to be CMB accounts. Now back to the update property of this data card. So I want to say if this toggle value is equal to true, then I want to send back the CMB contact dot selected. If it's false, I want to send CMB account dot selected. So I'm going to go Again, this is TGL customer type. So I'm gonna click up here and just copy that just to make the formula even easier to write. And I'm gonna say if toggle customer type dot value, again, that's returning a true or a false. So I don't even need to say if that is equal to true. It's already a true or false statement. So if toggle customer type dot value, then I want to send back CMB contacts dot selected. If it's false, I want to send back CMB accounts dot selected. All right, so let's go ahead and give this a test. So there's our button to submit our data. And on selected this button, all I wanna do is just submit form, form two. Now on success of this form, all I wanna do is reset the form keeping this example extremely basic today. So reset form, form two. Make sure that my form is in new mode and let's go ahead and play this and test it out. So this will say we're owed $100. This is receivable. And let's say we are owed this by a person. This time, we're gonna say Devin owes us 100 bucks. So I'll submit and it works. Perfect. Now let's try it again with the account. Let's say $200 this time and we need to pay this and we're gonna pay this to Dunder Mifflin. So it's submitting our data, it's adding those to our gallery so we know that the submission is working. So the second piece of polymorphic data types is not just how to submit the data, but now how do we display that data in our app? So let's take a look at this gallery and let's try to get our, you know, our do to and do from showing in this gallery. So right here, by default, it's pointing to this item dot ledger number. That's our auto number. So let's go ahead and remove that. 
and let's say this item dot customer is the name of our field and uh, with the data type it doesn't even give us a record it doesn't know because it doesn't know that it's a record it's a polymorphic data type so if we try to say this item dot customer dot we don't even get those you know the IntelliSense to say oh contact name like full name or the account name so let's try to do something else instead we're gonna use the as type formula so we're gonna say as type this allows us to convert whatever we tell it, whatever value, and we get to, you know, say what, how we want to show this. So we're going to say as type, the value is this item dot customer. And then we do a comma, we can provide it with a table. So for this one, let's do the contacts. Or you know what? No, I'm going to do the account. So this item dot customer and the type table is accounts now that's going to give us a record and because this is a label we need to provide it with some text so i'm going to say dot account name and you'll see that for some of them it works for some of them i got an error and it's saying you know it expected an account type and it got a contact so we can't display anything I'm going to try to show that error one more time that we got. So for this label, I'm going to cut this. I'm going to see if I can zoom in here for you so you can see the error that I get. And I'm going to put in that code again. And we'll see the type conversion failed because the given value was of type contact expected account type. So some of these it worked, some of these it didn't. So on top of that as type, let's also use uh, an if error statement. And we're going to say if we get an error on the account type, then let's use the contact type. And let's see if we can get that to work. So let's go back to this label here. So we've got as type, right, looking at the account table. But some of these, as we know, are contacts. So let's put this in an if error statement. Sorry, if error and the value that we want to provide is the same formula we just wrote so if this whole thing returns an error then we want to do as type and it's going to be the same thing here this item dot customer and this time if that's an error then we want to go to the contacts table We'll do the full name. Perfect. And as we put that in, so let's go ahead and format this text so we can look at this formula a little bit more and see what it's saying. So if this statement returns an error, which we saw that it did for some records, then we want to show the type of contact. We didn't provide an else value because it's going to automatically go back to the default value here. So if not an error, you know, just show this item the account name. So let's try this one more time. Let's say 200 and we are owed $200. And this time we'll say ABC Corp owes us $200. So we've got ABC Corp. Now let's show $300. And we're going to be owed this. And this time we'll do from a contact. We'll say Marshall Butler owes us 300 bucks. And it submits. And here we've got one label displaying either the contact or the account that is stored in the polymorphic data type. So as you can see, polymorphic data types are really not that scary. It just means, you know, it's an object that could look up to one table or could look up to another table. So in your form, you need to provide controls that allow you to store those objects, in our case, either the account or the contact. So hopefully this was helpful. Hopefully it takes away that fear of polymorphic data types a little bit. They're not, they're not scary. They're easy to work with. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you in another video soon.